Okay, this tutorial is to show how to use uh, your program to load a sequential file, a uh, flat file. In this case, it's going to be a text file to store data. This is a simple check in database where the user enters in their first name, last name, clicks the submit button, and it loads their check in here. And then vice versa, when each time this app is loaded, any uh, check-in information is loaded down here. Uh, also, this uh, property here, which is a uh, text box, I've made it read-only to what way they cannot edit the uh, contents of the text box, but they can read it and copy it and move it somewhere else. So let me go ahead and run this. Uh, So it shows here I first log in with a 508 AM on 11.7.16 and then second 5.10 at 11.7.16. If I go ahead and stop the app, run it again, you'll see both log files. Now, another thing before we get to the code, um, I did change the tab order as well. I wanted to, this to be 0 and then 1 and then 2. And I didn't want a tab to be affected by this field here, uh, which is a text box. So in order to change a tab order, which basically determines when you hit the tab key on your keyboard, where it go, what object it goes to next. If you click on the view menu and go down to tab order, you'll see the tab order for each object. So you'll notice this one's zero, this one's one, this one's two, three, four. And so if I go in here and click on these one more time, I'll sh show you how it updates these dynamically. Go back to the tab order. Go back again. You notice how they're all different now. So if I go back and I want to reset this to zero, then this to one, and this to two, and we'll do this three, four, five. Now let's see what happens when we run the app. See how the cursor starts here in the first tab order, which is zero. Now if I was to stop this and do it again, and do a different tab order, we'll say we'll make last name first, first name second, third, fourth, and fifth. Now let's run it and see what happens now. focusing on the second one because we made that zero index. As I hit the tab key, I'm going to go and do that now. Tab key should go to the button next, or the first name next, then the button third. It skips this. I'll talk about that why in a second. It goes back to the first again, which is the last name, the zero index. So I'll change this back. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Save it. And I'll click on the text box to show you how I made that read only. That way when the app is ran, users cannot type in this text box. You should be able to right click and copy that text but not edit the text. So let's get into the code. I'm going to double click here on the form. Immediately goes to a function called read file. In the read file, it declares a string, and here's the name of the path I declared for the 
file to be that's going to be loaded. And here it is right here already on my computer. And there's the contents of it. And that's exactly like it showed up on the app. So what it's going to do is first check if that file does not exist. If not io.file.exist path, then it's going to create the directory. And then it's going to create and dispose of that path directory in memory. That way it's not locked out to be used the next time. If this line wasn't used uh, and the app was to be ran again, uh, it will be shown as being locked and somebody using it. So this dispose line unlocks it basically, unlocks the, uh, from memory, that folder being in use, which in this case is ctemp. Then the next line is dim text file string is new IO file stream, ctemp text.text. .text. This gives the type of file it is, which is a op open or create, read write and no sharing what this is going to allow to do in fact i'll show here all the different options so if open and create append create new open and truncate this was uh, open and create open or create read write it is what it sounds like. It allows a person to read and write that file. And no sharing. Next line, declaring a file reader of that text stream, text file stream. Next line, contents, str file contents of string. Which, on this line here, it takes the contents of uh, the file it just read, which is going to be the text file. It's going to read it. Put it into the str files contents. This next line, it's going to put the contents in the text box, which is right here. Next line is going to close that reader, which you need to do, and it's going to close the stream, which you also need to do too. It could also lock up the uh, data from being used uh, subsequently afterwards. So that's what's happening when the app loads. Now let's look at what happens when we hit the submit button. So on the submit button, it's writing the file, clearing out the text notes dot text, reading the file, clearing out the first and last name, and putting the focus back on the first name. So let's start at the write file first. The write file again, declaring a, a IO stream file stream called text file stream to that checks.txt location. This time you'll notice instead of create, it's append. Because I want to append and if it a file that exists or just was created, either one, it's going to append the contents of this to the existing records. It, needs, it just needs to write only. And it does not need any share uh, methods. Next line, it declares a stream writer. So you always need a file stream to declare the file path. Then you need a, file, a stream writer to get ready to show you how to uh, write with this file stream. Next line, you take that file writer dot write line. I put in there date not now, which would mean to today's date and time. Ampersand for concatenation, colon, space for aesthetics. First ampersand again, text f name dot text, ampersand again, quotes with space in between it, ampersand again, text l name dot text, and parentheses. Close the write file, close the text stream. So it runs there, write file. This file, like this function then, is creating a brand new record. Clearing out the 
text notes at the bottom. And we need to do that before we read file. If we didn't do the, that, it would uh, add to the file contents that's already in there. So I'll clear out the bottom text notes. Read the file, which will bring in the existing plus the new record that was just written. Clear out both text boxes at the top. And then finally focus. So I'm going to go ahead and put a breakpoint here on this right here to show you how it functions. I'm going to go ahead and start it. And one of the things you can do for a challenge this week is maybe put a validation in here to make sure that first name and last name have contents before the submit button is allowed to write. So there's my breakpoint. I'm going to use the uh, step into. I want to use the step into function. Which is F8. And what it's doing now is going line by line on this text file stream. I'm hovering over this just to show you. This has now been declared as a file writer. This line has been completed. Now we're getting ready to close and close the text stream and file writer both. Next, clear out the text notes. I'm going to change over to the step over. Read file. Clear out the text F name, text L name, and put it back to focus. And there's that new record. Go back and check one last time here. File here. So, and there's the contents of the new one I just added. Now, let me show you if I delete that file here. Delete it. Take out this breakpoint. Run the app again. Nothing's in there. But now let's look at the file to see if it brought it back. Notice it's back now. It created it, remember, within the function. Uh, the load the read file function if that path doesn't exist it's going to create that directory c temp it's going to create the path which is this here c temp check.txt create that it's going to uh, read the file and put it in the contents of the bottom text notes and I clear out the reader and the stream. Well since there's since there's nothing in the file, there's nothing there's nothing to put in here. And if we were to go to that directory and open it up, there's nothing in here yet because nothing's been written. Well, let's write one last record. And notice now the record's been written and it's also showing up on the app. So that concludes how to use file IO reader, also using um, Streamwriter, uh, creating rec uh, folders, uh, re files, reading files, loading files and reading them, um, all the way to writing files and appending them in your application. We also talked about uh, tab order. And again, one of the challenges for this week is to maybe validate that there's contents in first name and last name before the submit button is allowed to be used. If it's if there isn't contents in both, uh, then maybe a message box will pop up and say, please enter in first and last name. That was a challenge for you to do this week. All right, we'll have a great week, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.